Hello, everybody, and welcome to another fine episode of the Without Context podcast. I am Decker Multi, joined uh, as usual by Anxiety Lasagna and Chucky Hat. Hello. Uh, t- today is, uh, we promised it last week, uh, we are going to talk about Pokemon. Um, it is December, which uh, traditionally, if you uh, follow the Facebook traditions, it is the change your profile picture to a pokemon month yep it is it's the uh, month of december Uh uh-huh every december uh and so far only one of my friends has done it and they've changed them they changed themselves into the uh, the new growlith in the uh, in the new pokemon game coming up in the legend of rcs one because it looks dumb with the little like the hair over his eyes it's really it's like a it's like a cute dumb yeah, we're also in uh the 25th anniversary currently. Uh, I believe it's uh, all of uh this year. So they're celebrating the uh, 25th anniversary of Pokemon. However much longer we have in this year. Yeah, it's uh February 27th, 1996. I believe when the first game came out. I'm old. We're old. Compilation uh, of all of us saying we're old. But yeah, let's get into this. I'm excited. All right. So um, I want to, as we normally do, we'll just discuss it like individually. And I want to, I want you to talk about, I'll start, I'll start off actually. I want to talk about um, some of your favorite Pokemon, name like three, I guess, because there's over 600 of them at this point. Um, and then your favorite region. Um, so one of my favorite Pokemon that, uh, Gets a lot of controversy because of it is actually Mr. Mime. See, exactly that face right there. <laughs> of all the Pokemon. So let me explain him. So let me explain. In Pokemon Red and Blue, I think it was, I think it, yeah, it was both of them. <clears throat> There's a dude who's like, if you give me this Graveler, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you, if you give me your Graveler, I'll give you a Mr. Mime or it was Geo or something. Um, and you make the trade. Mr. Mime is the most consistent Pokemon that you can, psychic type Pokemon that you can pick up in Pokemon, uh, red. Everything else is either super rare, teleports out when you need it, or is typed into, like, something that's weak against fire. Um, so, I, I needed that, I needed that, that, when I need that one consistent guy, Mr. Mime is there for me every single time in Pokemon red and blue. And I think yellow as well. Ash's mom would say the same thing. You are correct. I can't believe Ash's stepdad's a Mr. Mime. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. If you know, you know. Uh, Can we also talk about that for a second? I saw a screen cap from a recent Pokemon episode because the animated series is still going on. Like everything else right now, they're going into multiverse. There's two Ashes running around. Because they're opening up like multiverse like portals for other universes to come through. And I was like, how complicated is Pokemon getting? <laughs> like, this is a game about an unsupervised 12-year-old fighting crime. So... Ten year old. Ten year old. Yeah. It's been ten for twenty-five years. Uh, <laughs> yep. How old are you? Ten. How long have you been ten? A while. <laughs> Um, one of my, uh, yeah, so Mr. Mime is up there. Um, but also I like, I really like, uh, Ludicolo. Just a, just a big, just a big grass water type with the big, with the, with the fucking sombrero. The big sombrero. Yeah. It's, it's, it should be offensive, but also he's just vibing. Um, and. And uh, I think finally, uh, one of my other faves is uh, keeping in the same theme of anthropomorphic trees, uh, Executor. Yeah, just eggs. Just eggs, just eggs in a tree. And then the, the like... ginormous one when you're a lo- the Lola one. That's randomly part dragon. Yeah. I've missed some oh. games. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I think Deck has missed some games too, because... I brought up the Wikipedia page because I'm going to do that thing that we do every episode where 
if you have somehow avoided Pokemon your entire life, I need to explain to you what it is just to give you a basis of the episode. <laughs> Uh, okay. There are also currently 901 Pokemon. Oh my god, that's too many! <laughs> Not 650, so we've missed a few. Well, I I said I said over 600. I am technically correct. <laughs> to be fair, though, I don't know if that's like individual or if that's like every one plus all their evolutions. But it says 901 species, so I'm assuming 901 different Pokemon. Either way, uh, it is. Uh, Wiki says that it is a media franchise. I believe that's underselling it. I believe media juggernaut would be a better term. Uh, media juggernaut is up there, yeah. Uh, because this thing is just... I don't think Pokemon will ever fail at this point. I think as yeah, long as we know. live, there will be Pokemon. It's just going to be one of those things now. Um, By Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. It was created by uh, Satoshi Tajiri in 96. Uh, some stuff about him, uh, the idea came from him just wandering around his backyard. I believe, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe. Um, I don't, I think I remember reading something that uh, Satoshi was on the autistic spectrum which is why he was usually out like just exploring instead of doing stuff mm -hmm. but i can't find any confirmation of that so i'm not going to uh speak out of turn on that without better clarification but it's just the idea of him walking around his backyard as a kid finding bugs finding creatures and turning it into a game idea which kind of punched pop culture in the face for the last <laughs> 25 years and it's yeah. on top now i mean even most people you show them pikachu they're going to know who it is like it's almost like mario and all that kind of status now and i mean pokemon's been represented in a bunch of other nintendo stuff too smash brothers uh stuff like that but yeah it's sure. a, and the games uh is it was a card game it's a tv show it's a series of rpg games which was the first rpg that i played i didn't know it was an rpg at the time because also used to like three on three like team like things from final fantasy mm -hmm. so seeing this like 1v1 monster thing i was like this isn't a final fantasy style game but uh i grew up with the card game a lot like i think pokemon card game is what got me into like card games leading up to magic now oh so, no there's I definitely that trend of pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh into magic as my pipeline. trading card game history. But uh Pokemon pipeline. And uh the thing about Pokemon is that it is the highest grossing media franchise of all time. Like I don't think anything's going to come close to it at this point. There's just way too much for it. Like whole ass albums um like you said the trading cards move up uh, uh, bunch of movies yeah so looking at that wiki page uh 1.8 billion total revenue off of pokemon uh the thing right below that hello kitty surprisingly but that's only 88 billion hello that's kitty surprising. slaps hello kitty and, slaps. That's not surprising. and then below that you have mickey this thing has sold more than mickey in its lifetime and mickey's been around since the as 30s it should. As like it should as it should as it Donald's should mickey's just one mickey's just one rat yeah, there's, there's like, like 901 so rats. There's we so just... many rats in Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. But uh, um, 20 seasons, a thousand episodes of the animated series. So it's on one piece level of longevity. <laughs> and I don't think they have an end in sight because of how they do each series now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just this huge media franchise. And uh, I think for the most part today, we're going to be talking about the games because I think that is what we all had as our intro to Pokemon. I think my path is game into card game into, you know, other stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was just my brief rundown of the franchise rundown. to at least give us a base for people who might not know who Pokemon is and who are you. I need to know what you've done with your life. I need to know how you've lived your life. I, 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 need, I need to know how you've avoided this for 25 years. Please so. make a biography. But uh, yeah, we'll um, go back to uh, Deco. Uh, uh, so 
my favorite region uh for a reason completely unrelated to the game is Hoenn. Um Gen 3. That's Gen 3, yeah. Gen 3 Professor uh Birch, I believe, like just fucking shorts and sandals. Is that a Ruby Sapphire? Lab, oh, it's Ruby Sapphire and Emerald. Okay. Um and I remember I was with my partner at the time because I was uh, 17 going on 18, I think. Um, and I was with my partner at the time when we, we had gotten like uh, a, a private room together. Um, and and uh, <laughs> Pokemon goes on behind closed doors. <laughs> so, I, so yeah, I was playing Pokemon Emerald. I, had, um, I was on the cusp of beating it to the point of like having just freshly beaten it my partner at the time is talking to uh their uh, friend on the phone and uh they go here it's here it's uh my friend wants to talk to you um and this i just hear they did not come all the way from california just to sit there while you're on the computer doing whatever you better get you better spend time with them right now <laughs> that Which, tracks Fair enough. Uh, uh, so that was that's that is uh, it is a fun, weird little bit of nostalgia for me in just the weirdest way that has absolutely nothing to do with the game. Um, but yeah, that's that's my uh, Pokemon story for now. I want to sh- see what Sharky has. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely I'm at least one of them is a shark type. I'm definitely going to sound like the old man yelling at clouds where it's like Gen 1 and Gen 2 and that's it for me. Like not playing any of the the anything past uh, gold and silver. So I'm definitely going to be that guy in the community that's old man yelling at clouds. And um, from the beginning, it's, I've always had a water type starter no matter the game because it was Squirtle and then Totodile. The just happy crocodile Pokemon, which I is probably one of my favorite ones. I think that's always my Facebook profile photo each December is a Totodile. Um, but I got the game. Uh, I think the year that it came out. Yep. Oh, that's my other phone. I'm gonna turn that off. Real quick. Do do do. Gonna don't even have to cut. don't even have to cut that because it's just gonna <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh i think i got it the year that i came out i had opened the game first before opening the box that had the game boy in it so i was upset because i was like i can't play this <laughs> and then uh, the next present you idiot and then yeah then they handed me the next box and it was the uh not the gray brick Game Boy. We had one of those. My older sister had one of those. I got. I was the first one to get one of the smaller ones. It wasn't the color and it wasn't the slim. It was just the... Well, I think it was a color. I think the slim one was a different model. Hmm. But uh, I got that and I sat down and played that uh, Christmas morning. And I was sitting there. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like... <laughs> I was like eight years old at the time. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, where I'm going. How does this game work? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just kind of play it, though. And when Gold and Silver came out, my brain was working a little bit better as I grew up. So it was like well, we were we were in middle school at the time. So, yeah, so it was like, oh, oh no, I okay. was in elementary school. Yeah. When Gold yeah. and Silver came out. So I think I was in middle school when Gold and Silver came out and uh I had a better understanding of the mechanics then because I had played the first I would played blue a lot since I got it and I was starting to get into RPGs like Final Fantasy and everything. So the idea of like, wait a minute, this character has a level. I'm traveling. I have random encounters. That's when it clicked my brain like this is an RPG just in a different presentation. So I was able to start playing that a little bit better. And uh I've always been like a more balanced trainer, so it's like I start with a water type. First thing I do, find a grass or an electric type in blue, because like I need to do something against a uh, misty. I don't want to just throw a rock or water against her. So I was like, "There's that one spot in Viridian Forest where I can catch a Pikachu, and I'm gonna get that Pikachu, and I'm gonna train him and be ready for Misty." Um, 
Tear that bitch apart. In the first generation of Pokemon, I have to say, I think my favorite is the uh, Squirtle evolution chain. And then um, the legendary birds. I really like Zapdos as a design. Good design. And from the, yeah, from the second series of games, um, it's definitely the uh, Totodile evolutions. And then Wooper. <laughs> yeah, no, that that tracks for you. Big dumb. I like, I like Wooper dumb. because I like Quagshire when he evolves into, <laughs> and he's just this Big. empty-headed, <laughs> like, sal- big fat salamander, shaped like a friend. Um, yeah, he's friend shaped. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, I think the legendaries in that generation got me too. I really like Lugia's design, um, a lot. I mean, there are other ones. Uh, I just can't remember exact names, but I know if I like saw a picture, I was like, I always caught that one. You know, like that was one that I always caught on my team. Uh, Houndar, Houndar, and Houndoom, the uh, Doberman and like Rottweiler, like mm. Dark Dog. Because that was the thing. That generation was like, here's Dark type Pokemon, and I was like, ooh, edgy. <laughs> ooh, edgy. And then the other game was also like, here's Whitney, the bane of your existence. And I was like, I am scared of this cow. So- <laughs> oh my god, I was going to talk about freaking Milk Tank and his freaking rollout. Oh it's my just like, god, that was so unfair. Even, even just like, on a moves that it's not very effective, still one taps you. Because it keeps building. So it's like, it knocks yeah. out your priest Pokemon. You send out the other one. That increased power rollout hits that next one. <laughs> and it's like, can you stop? <laughs> Please. I have a wife and kids. Hit them instead. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I hate Miltank, uh, just from that gym battle alone. Uh, and I think, like, my favorite, my favorite character in that game, uh, out of the two games, I really dig Lance. Like, just as, like, the Elite Four Lance. Just yep. him. He has a cape. He has a bunch of dragons. He's like, you have to beat me to get to this final challenge. <laughs> and I'm like, you're like th- the closest thing to an actual like end game boss I can think of besides my rival. <laughs> so, and you have the looks to go with it. <laughs> like, you just look cool. And then like That's a later cool. edition had like his cousin or something. I think a uh, second generation Elite Four had uh, another dragon type trainer. I thought the I thought one of the gyms was dragon type. I think it, was, it might it was be, but it's like another dragon type trainer that I think has like mm-hmm. a relation to Lance. And I was like, oh, I guess yeah. the elaborate like outfits just like run in the family <laughs> because it's just That's like true. we're dra- cape. yeah, it's like we're dragon uh, trainers, so we have capes and stuff. And it's like I can dig it. Mm. But uh, yeah, the dragon types. I mean, Gyarados, Dragonite, Dragonair. Just Dragonite is friend shaped. So, but, it's very but, obviously not the not the final design it was meant to be, but it's what no. we got, and we love it. Because you get Dratini, little serpent thing. You get Dragonair, longer serpent thing, and then you get Dragonite, big fat happy dragon, tiny wings. <laughs> and it's like this was not the evolution chain. This was probably meant to be its own thing. It's like it's like <laughs> Venomoth and Butterfree, I think. Yeah, where it's two different uh. Oh yeah, Venonette, the Venomoth, and Butterfree are like, this probably could have yeah. worked as like a separate evolution chain like later generations did. Where it's like, if your Metapod evolves in the day, it's Butterfree and at night, it's Venomoth. Well, so I that, think, uh, so like I think Butterfree was actually just straight up supposed to be the evolution to Venonette. Yeah. Or what we got as Butterfree, just because they look, the, the color coding is way too similar. Yeah. Uh, the Pokemon I think I relate to the most, though, is definitely Snorlax. <laughs> in quarantine eat. absolutely in quarantine eat lay down sleep vibe flourish in your own lane <laughs> moisturize moisturize in my just, own lane unbothered it's just like i want to be him i just want to block some guy's path <laughs> until he plays flute music <laughs> so then i get up and punch him in the face yeah but uh, yeah, those are kind of my memories and some of my favorites and what got me about the games. So 
hey, let's uh, hear your story about Whitney and her cow. <laughs> I mean, we we covered it already. Yeah. We're just that was the bane of my elementary school existence was Whitney, because uh, like I don't even think ghost type would work because like you could get a ghost type and wreck shop because like normal type moves aren't normal types can't ghosts. hit it. But I don't think you could catch but a then ghost she type does at that roll point. Out, and I'm like, can if you're creative. Um, it was but... like what? It was like a Chansey, a Clefairy, and a Mill Tank. I think was her. Yeah, the freaking Milk Tank it just was on cool on cool we also love clefairy yeah <laughs> but uh my favorite pokemon of all time is my sweet baby boy growlith or my sweet baby growlith every Aww. growlith that i catch is always nicknamed growly and uh there's no such thing as an evolution for this for this buddy because growlith is perfect and does not need to evolve because Fire Puppy is perfect and adorable and wonderful and the best, best thing that's ever been made ever. Also, he's got little beans. Beans. Little beans. Um, I remember the first time I had to fight a Growlithe and I almost stopped playing the game because I was like, I can't hurt a Growlithe because like on the cruise ship, a bunch of the like gentlemen have growlets and you have to fight them. I'm like, <laughs> why would you do that? Like, even in Pokemon Go, I catch like every growlet that I see, and it's just like growly one, growly two, through like growly twelve. And they're like, you can trade those in to get like growlet candies for Arcanine. And I'm like, not in front of my child. <laughs> he is perfect. I don't. So growlet, growlet is best. Best Pokemon. I don't care. Best best Pokemon. Never have evolved one because you have to use a Firestone. So you have to like yep. deliberately evolve. And they're like, you're not, you're not even getting like the most power out of them. I'm like, yes. But look <laughs> at his face. She's I'm just... not evolving. <laughs> I'm not gonna you do it. You'd have bigger fluffy dog. But less cute fluffy dog. Want fire puppy, not fire dog. <laughs> Fire puppy is best fire. Anyway, uh, I would say my favorite starter is Bulbasaur. And I think I told this story on last week's episode, but just in case uh, you want a refresher, this is the only Bulbasaur in like this whole bin at a GameStop of first gen starters. And I was like, oh my God, he's all alone. <laughs> and so I bought him and Bulbasaur is my favorite gen one starter ever since. Um, just because I feel like he's underappreciated and he's got, he's got a bulb and I just think he's great. And he's a little dinosaur with a plant symbiotic relationship. We love it. <laughs> um, but my first Pokemon game was not red, blue, and yellow. I went to, I remember it vividly. Um, the first, like, uh, what is it like, uh, exposure to Pokemon I had was at my sister's gymnastics gym. They had this little, like, tube TV in the corner for all the siblings to watch while the gymnasts were doing stuff so the parents wouldn't have to constantly parent us. And there was the episode um, where they fight Lieutenant Surge in the original Pokemon show. Oh. And I thought it was the dumbest thing I'd ever seen. So I was like, <laughs> why are all these things, like, just saying their own names? That's really dumb. And I remember, like, having a conversation with my mom about how stupid it was. And then I went to school, and all of my guy friends were playing Pokemon. And I had to be like, Mom, I apparently have to care about Pokemon now. So I remember going to Walmart with my grandmother, uh, the one who introduced me to Legend of Zelda and video gaming and stuff. She, we went to Walmart for my good report card, and she, I feel terrible about it to this day. Um, and she bought me gold, like Pokemon gold, to play. But I didn't have a Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to tell her that before she bought me the game. So then she also bought me the limited edition gold, silver, like depending on how you held it, it changed from gold oh, to nice. silver Game Boy Color. Cool. Yeah, I felt like the worst grandchild because I was like, not only did I get like a $50 game, but I also got like a hundred and some dollar console. <laughs> um, so the first game that I ever got was Pokemon Gold. And 
played it until it broke when I was in high school. Um, like I had used too many like cheats with like the game shark and the like cloning glitch that the game just the game file just got corrupted and it couldn't have a save file. Like I'd have to have it running 24-7 to like play the game, but it ran on double A batteries. Um, because it was it was the early 2000s late 90s early 2000s so consoles ran on replaceable batteries <laughs> um but after that i was i got silver and i got crystal and i've talked about how like revolutionary it was for me to be able to play a girl in crystal that was wild all my guy friends were like you can't just start with gold and silver you have to play red blue and yellow so then i got red blue and yellow and i didn't like them as much because i had a color game and uh -huh. then I was playing a not color game, and I'm like, uh -huh. this game's ugly. I don't think I ever beat it. Um, I, I actually want to sidebar from that for just a sec, because I remember playing, much like you playing red, blue, yellow, and being like, these games suck. They're all, it's like mono, monochrome. Well, they didn't suck, but, you know, after playing, ugly. like, yellow in the, on the Game Boy Color, and it, there's colors and stuff, uh, what, I played Pokemon Stadium. And when you, you can play your Pokemon games on Pokemon Stadium in full ass color, I'm like, wow, is that what I've been missing this whole time? <laughs> Jesus, I didn't know his I didn't know his little head frill was that color. Yeah, I don't know if this is how it worked on like the Game Boys, but like when I would play red on my color, everything was red tinted. And when I played blue, everything was yeah. blue tinted. Um but on, I, the only other Pokemon games I play besides Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal are uh, Sapphire and a little bit of Emerald. I was playing someone else's Emerald copy. Um, but we planned amongst my group of friends in middle school where half of us got Silver and half of us got, uh, or Sapphire and half of us got Ruby so we could trade with each other for the Pokemon that we needed. And that was the game where you could have secret bases and we would decorate our secret bases and you could like go to each other's secret bases like once you became like friends with somebody or you had traded with them you could find their secret base in your game which i thought was super cool so we would try and make like the coolest secret base and like the most hidden spot which was fun but i think johto is always going to be my favorite region because that was the first one that i played and i played the absolute crap out of it <laughs> um I got all the legendaries, all the legendary dogs, like figured out all the formulas for it. It was just like super duper into it. Had like through the cheat glitch, uh, if anyone remembers that, you could like when you put a Pokemon into a box and it was like saving, don't turn off the power. If you turn the power off, the Pokemon would be in your inventory and in the box that you saved it in. So you could have an entire party of level 100 Mewtwo's <laughs> and the game would function. <laughs> um, so I had an entire party of level 100 Mewtwo's. Uh, you could do the same. There was some kind of like infinite rare candy. Uh, you could, One of my friends. Mm -hmm. In uh, red and blue. Yeah, you could glitch the game flying to Cinnabar after like triggering something and like no, go no. across, swim across the island find a Pokemon called Missingno, which is just, like, corrupted data, and the sixth item in your inventory uh, would be duplicated. <laughs> so people would just do rare candies and just level up everybody. Yeah, we had... That's what I did. That's what I did. A lot. <laughs> especially, especially once it got to Ruby and Sapphire, there, my one friend had this like attachment where you would like stick it into your Game Boy Advance, and then you'd stick the game in, and it listed like all of these cheats you so you could get like Pokemon game that were even in the game. Game Sharks, yeah. Yep. And which that was, was my fun. original, which was my original idea for a name, but I decided that might be too hard to market. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of Sharky yeah. Hat, you guys might have known as Game Shark if I had gone that path. Gamer Shark. But yeah. Oh, we were supposed to say three Pokemon we liked. I guess. Oh, we just been we just been saying so. We just got to fill an hour. That's all. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess if I had to pick a third, I would say Umbreon. Yeah. I think Umbreon is the coolest of all of the evolutions. Mm -hmm. Um, it was Jolteon for a while just because like Spiky Boy, and then Umbreon is just a nice color. I know. Uh. 
in recent editions they they had the pokemon that was set in like pokemon england or pokemon yeah. like united kingdom and one of the pokemon was an electric type corgi which is yep. great uh, <laughs> yapper i think yeah. i think it was like yapper i was like all right i'll give him a pass on this generation for this one alone <laughs> so I think one of the dumbest Pokemon that I've encountered, I don't remember which generation it is, and if it is your favorite Pokemon, I, I'm i actually sorry for this one, um, but I don't think I can get past the Sentient Bag of Trash. No, the yeah, Sentient Bag of Trash. coming from my own personal brand a little too harshly. <laughs> um, that's a, are you a Sentient a little Bag bit of Trash? Unforgivable. I am a Sentient <laughs> Bag of Trash. <laughs> So the fact that Pokemon has gone ahead and like stolen my entire concept as like a human being was pretty deeply <laughs> upsetting to me when that came out. Um, In an alternate universe, your your username is Anxiety Trash Can. <laughs> I originally was gonna be like Trash Panda something, with this little friend being my oh. like mascot. It's just a raccoon like, Christmas ornament that I packed on with at a Target. <laughs> no, it's just a Christmas tree ornament that I pack bonded with at a Target one time. Gotcha. <laughs> and now he just lives with me. <laughs> just sits on your windowsill. Yep. My little trash um, boy. What kind of I just bring it around with you all again. What kind of Pokemon do you guys find that you're consistently having in your party? I know you're going to say Growlithe here. But uh, just like uh, the Pokemon you consistently have in your party, uh, no matter what game you're playing. Um, I um, think I'm probably the person here who has played the most Pokemon, question mark, or at least I, more the more games. I, I found that I always ended up with that first bird that you encounter, whether in the first two games it was a Pidgey or in the third one it was Talo. Like, I could not go through a game. Like, there's way cooler flying types you could have gotten. But, like, small burb? Of course okay. I'm going to catch small burb. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as uh, Haley here. Um, it was always be, get the starter, catch a Pidgey, find a Pikachu in Verdean Forest, and then proceed with the game. But if they didn't have a Pidgey, it was Free Gen game? 2. It was like Gen 2, uh, it was like, catch a Hoot Hoot, so you have a flying type. You could get Pidgey in Gen 2. You could get Pidgey during the day and Hoot Hoot at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was one of those two. It was either Hoot Hoot or Pidgey. Again, just get that flying type. Uh, Hoot Hoot was uh, like Just get that uh, flying type down. And uh, always a Geodude, if I came across one. Just as like, just throw him Pretty against likely. Surge and then just not lose. So, um, oh, this has beans too. Little togepi beans. Oh, togepi togepi beans. beans. I but uh, I, I was one of those players where like I didn't try to have like a like I tried to have a balanced team where like I wanted to have like a fire type or a water type and a grass type and like try and make it so I had a type advantage. But I also would just pack bond with like the dumbest Pokemon. <laughs> And just be like, no, we're best friends. And we're going to, like, be the very best that no one ever was. And, like, Pokemon is about friendship. And they're like, you're not even, like, uh, going by their stats or when they added, like, nature and, like, IVs or EVs or whatever it is. That's going to be a like, whole thing I want to talk about <laughs> in a few minutes. Like, no, Sorry. I just want friend. I just want friend. And I will, other friend and other friend. I will admit that I caught an embarrassing amount of Bidoofs when I was playing Pokemon. Uh, if you don't know what Bidoof is, it is just the uh, most absent-minded looking groundhog thing I've ever seen what in my life. Who is he from? Uh, he's from Gen uh, 4. Gen 4. Oh, I didn't get that far. Uh, Hang on, I got, I got you. I don't okay, I didn't catch him then. I just I love Bidoof though. He just he is the dumbest looking Pokemon. There's not a single thought going on in his mind. If you want to share a picture of him in the chat, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> For all those who can't see, Haley is losing her mind. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shut up! Uh, How is something that stupid? Is that Badoof. cute? Badoof, the plump mouse Pokemon. That's not a mouse, that's a beaver. <laughs> he does he does evolve. He does evolve into a beaver, I believe. Um if you think of, if you think about it, a beaver is a plump mouse. Yeah, he evolves into a beaver. You can find his uh, evolution is just a oh dumb beaver. Oh my god, look at it. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> it is. I don't know if I love it or if I hate it. Like, Here's I, the evolution. Uh, Pops up. I relate to Bidoof on a spiritual level. <laughs> I loved whatever this evolution is until I scrolled up to see its eyes and then I was like, nope, solidly hate it. <laughs> It's um, got a little eye mask on. But like uh um, Yeah, but like Haley, uh unlike Haley, I kinda try to balance my team every game. I was like, let's get a flying, let's get an electric, let's get a ground. If I can find a fire, let's get a fire onto the team. It was most of the time Vulpix. I think that was the only one readily available in red and blue mm-hmm. without trading. So I mean you could probably catch Ponyta, I believe, in red, but I think uh, blue got Vulpix. It was the other way around, I believe. Yeah, so that was the thing. Like the editions had specific Pokemon, so you had to trade to complete the Pokedex. Growl. You saw you saw this thing and said, <laughs> "I'm gonna catch Vulpix." <laughs> but uh, I don't know if we can be friends anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that was the uh, thing. It's like I never completed the Pokedex. Like I think that was just I one did. of those. I just, no matter how long I had gold and silver or blue or blue, I just never completed the Pokedex. I was and... able to cheat it because I had a Game Boy Color, and eventually my older sister got a Game Boy Advance, and she got bored of it really quick. She's like, I'm too cool to play a video game. Um, so I would have my gold and my silver, and I would catch whatever ones that I needed, and then put that little cable in and then trade it to myself. <laughs> Can we take a second to talk about the link cable? <laughs> yeah, let's talk that about the fucking yeah, that wild. It's like connect your two Game Boys together to do a very long winded trade segment. <laughs> and also don't move the cable at all or there it's was, gonna fuck up. There was also the infrared sensor on the top where you could point mm-hmm. two Game Boys at each other to get like a GIF between them. But the th- biggest thing is that the link cable let you also battle your friend, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that could probably segue into whatever the fuck they've done for competitive Pokemon in recent generations, where they're like, here's IVs and all this other stuff. And I was like, bro, it's just a game about monsters punching each other. Why do you have to make it so complicated? <laughs> like, Wasn't that but, introduced in like Gen 2 or something? Maybe. I think it was a hidden value in Gen 2. Like you couldn't see it. And then I think in Gen 3, they actually had like a stat card on your Pokemon for it. So it's like you can not only. Yeah, nature's uh, Pokemon powers, I think, were a thing, too. Like they each had like a trait and then the IV being like a visible thing. So I think from Gen 3, the competitive aspect of Pokemon, just like. The entry level is like, if you're not going in knowing this, you're just not going to be good at the competitive scene. Or you're not going to be good like playing against other trainers because you're just going to be completely unprepared for the min-maxing that goes into Pokemon at this point. Someone, someone fucks around with a hidden power lightning on your on your uh, Vaporeon and you're just done for. Yeah, and I've been watching uh, recently uh, Pokemon battles for like Pokemon Showdown on YouTube and I'm just like bro, why is this? What? This is like input like combinations like do this on this turn do this on that turn and that's like what the battle is it's not just like doing things it's just like most of the time they're not even like really fighting each other until one move hits so it's just were you all ever proponents of the stat changing moves like my my once my one stat is moving their hp to zero yes when i am playing it by myself and I'm just playing the game. If the move does not do damage, I get rid of it. <laughs> Preach. Preach. But, 
but like I, I was saying, never understood the like. I understand the competitive aspect of it. Yeah. I think the only time like having a stat, to, like a stat changing move, was ever helpful was like one time during the Elite Four. I had to like use an item to boost my one Pokemon speed. And they had a move that lowered the opposing Pokemon speed. And that was the only way I was able to win. It was like, I had the type advantage, but they were faster. So they could just wreck yeah. me before I could even get in a move. So I was like, oh, that's where they're going with this. I just don't have the patience because I'm. And that's a, like the stuff that I've been watching. It's like they drop in and it's like this, like Shuckle will use something that is supposed to reduce like defenses to increase attacks and everything but then it's like it's po oh. it's pokemon power kicked in and then it was like oh all the negative and positive effects get reversed so it's stronger to take hits now and i'm like so this is just what a stall tactic for this guy or <laughs> you might be able to look this up one of sure. you I remember distinctly back when I was still playing Pokemon there was some big deal involving Shuckle like whether he was like overpowered or there was something about Shuckle that everybody was like Shuckle's the best Pokemon oh my god I'm like the like spaghetti noodle in a turtle shell is the best most strongest most game breaking Pokemon how in the world so I'm yeah, I'm on a yeah, I'm on a Bulbapedia just kind of looking up uh stuff. Apparently his stats have the greatest standard deviation. Mm -hmm. Uh due to extreme distribution, they're either the best of or the bottom three of every base stat. So that yeah, was just it. They're like if you can get a perfect shuckle, he's like yes. unbeatable. Um, by using power like, trick. Who has the time? Yeah, by using Power Trick, Chuckle can reach a base attack of 230, which is the highest of all Pokemon. <laughs> Chuckle yeah. is not fucking around. <laughs> Don't fuckle with the Chuckle. No, no. I think that was the joke. That was the joke. <laughs> oh my god, I, I hate I hate Pokemon. <laughs> I hate it here. Yeah, don't fuckle um, with Chuckle. I remember that meme. It's just oh, a shuckle with sunglasses. <laughs> yep, just, just a shuckle with sun. And it's also like, would the shuckle wear sunglasses like this? Or it, it has one on all of its little noodles. <laughs> just a, what a Did weird you want to talk about controversies? I think, Decca, you Absolutely. mentioned. Oh, yeah, I have a um, recording. Yeah, I have a I think list, I know so of like, whatever Decca can bring up. I have like sure. one or two that I knew of, but so, I, go ahead. Um, when Pokemon initially came out, uh, they are little, they're just little creatures. Most of them are based on folklore from various cultures. Um, like Vulpix is based on the nine-tailed fox mythos and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but because they are not little Christian angels or whatever, uh, secular movements didn't like it. <laughs> And it was drawing attention away from them. I'm I'm going to be a little biased against this because I do have strong anti-religious things. But um, I do remember in particular, I have a life uh, experience with um, when my uh, grandmother uh, was still around. Uh, and we were like, I think we were like eight. I think she got us each uh, one of those like three packs of booster packs for the Pokemon trading card game. Um and I remember hearing a story like, oh, your aunt thinks it's uh, or the people that your aunt uh, goes to worship with uh, think those are, those are like little demons. And I'm like. No, they're not. <laughs> what do you mean? Baby with the beans? It shoots fire. Therefore, it is a spawn of Satan. <laughs> That's that's what that's what the the logic is like. Um, yeah. And if you go around like if you listen to like older, um, uh, I think it actually got litigation. Um, if you listen to like some of the yeah, of course. Uh, if you listen to some of the some of the litigation, you can hear where people are trying to justify their um, wanting to censor Pokemon 
Question yeah. mark. Uh, I, uh, but Sharky actually has the wiki open, so he can give us more information on this. Oh man, I want to do like a full like Satanic Panic episode of us just like actually like researching into that and seeing because there's a lot that we love as a group that just ties into it. Um, so on this, some of the major uh stuff, uh, Jinx when the Pokemon came out was heavily criticized as a racial stereotype. Yeah. And it is, I it's not that. hard to see it. Uh, in, in later designs though, they did, uh, design them to be purple instead of a uh, pitch black though. So they are, they did actually change the uh, blackface design. I think I was literally the gen after, after. Uh, yes. Came up. I was like, um, oh, we fucked up next. Yeah. Uh, Something from the TV show, uh, the episode with uh, Porygon had Porygon. to be removed because it caused seizures for the flashing lights in histories of even with kids who didn't have history of seizures. So they. Well, yeah, have you seen that. it? It's ridiculous. Um, it's ridiculous. I don't, like, I don't think it ever made the air in the States. I think it, it was just in, it, it, nope. they, they nipped that in the bud over in Japan. Yeah, it was also, uh, that episode was one of the episodes to why they changed it to Pokemon from po Pocket Monsters, because they didn't want Western territories to know that the name was for the same show. So they changed the name, so any coverage of Pocket Monster wouldn't be linked to Pokemon in that regards. Um, smart. I'll give them that, that's smart. In some of the minor ones, uh, some of the stuff in the animated series also, the Legend of Dratini episode... Uh, Ash had a gun pointed at his head by the That's safari guy. It's just a dude like this in the in the in the anime. I was gonna say that that happened in Yu-Gi-Oh, where four kids censored episodes of yeah, it's just where Keith. security guards held guns, so they're just going like this, like, yeah. "Hey, you, stop!" <laughs> yeah, there's Bandit Keith holding the gun to Pegasus' head, and it's like, "Bro, chill, it's just a card game." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then there's the infamous episode of a. Uh, James having larger breasts than Jesse in the bathing suit. If you've ever seen yep, that screenshot. Oh, that screenshot. Where he's just like this. Um two episodes were actually removed. Uh and you can probably guess why. Uh one of the episodes was Tower of Terror, and the other one was a scare in the air. They were supposed to air after September eleventh. <laughs> so yeah. They're, they're just like we're not going to uh we're let's, not going to do not, that <laughs> not say we did. and i mean then you have just the yeah the normal stuff uh you have the religious uh groups and the animal rights groups calling for a boycott on pokemon i remember PETA got really into it and they even made like a parody game yep. about it where it's like you just like beat your pokemon Dude. That's like relatively I, recent too. Yeah. I could talk for a long time about how hypocritical PETA is. Um, yeah, we know. But that is a topic for a different test. Um, but I have a Pokemon controversy. I don't know if it's like in the same vein as controversy sure. that you were talking about, but have you guys seen what's been going on with the new re-release of um, is it Diamond and Pearl that they just put back out? Yes. It's like brilliant. Um, not sure. Yeah, it's apparently busted, which is very surprising considering how like neat and clean Nintendo games tend to be. But there's so many like errors, like Bethesda level errors <laughs> in that game where you can like glitch yourself into a spot and not get out. And then you have to like reset your game. Or I remember you have, like you can just there's all those kind of like polish things that were missed in a Nintendo game. And everyone's like, what in the world is going on? This has never happened with a Pokemon game. Like they didn't play test it or something. I remember seeing something on Twitter uh, because everything's the same like layout as Diamond and Pearl was uh, on the three on the DS, I believe is when Diamond and Pearl came out. Uh, they didn't account for that you could move diagonally in this version of the game so you know, people were moving diagonally to get up like hills and shortcuts and everything and it's like i don't know if that's an exploit i think that's just like forgetting that there are new mechanics in this generation 
But um, yeah, it. I don't know. I haven't played any of the Pokemon games that have come out on the Switch, but I do feel maybe it's about time that some bugs crept into Pokemon. They've had kind of a clean track record. They were bound to make a mistake. So I'm looking up, it's an article from Screen Rant, just like the okay. first thing that popped up on Google. Um, they, they, they're they already on version 1.1.2 for patches of this game, which um, Nintendo customer support said the patch, quote, fixed some, of the is- some issues of prevent the game from progressing under circum- certain circumstances, and that some issues have also been fixed for more pleasant gameplay. One of them including um, a menu glitch, which would allow players to skip most of the game by opening the main menu in places where it shouldn't normally be able to be opened, such as during battle. <laughs> There's also a duplication glitch that allowed players to duplicate Pokemon and their held items, which can be used to obtain many copies of rare Pokemon and items. But the other minor glitches have apparently been removed from during the patch. But, like, how did they miss that again? <laughs> to be fair, at least they're consistent about item duplication glitches. If there has been a running bug in Pokemon games, it has been a duplication glitch. This is just on brand for Pokemon. Yep. <laughs> just they've what they been, do. They've, um, players reported getting stuck behind NPCs between large snowballs <laughs> and the Snowpoint City gym. Soft blocking glitches. Uh, another minor but less dangerous glitch that is said to have been fixed is the ability to skip most of a gym, taking advantage of the new diagonal movement. Players have enjoyed making use of the menu glitch and the duplication glitch, but the smaller glitches have been patched out. But yeah, there was some pretty wild stuff that I was seeing on TikTok of people being like, who play tested this game? I've I've definitely been able to like skip most of a gym in most Pokemon games I've played. Very rarely do they make you go through like oh, yeah. six trainers to get to the gym leader. So I don't know what the hubbub is about that. I think with the older games, like if you wanted to skip parts of a gym, you'd have to be like strategic about how you move yeah. through the gym. But this was like you could just like float through a wall and get past <laughs> a trainer that you weren't supposed to be able to get past to. Sure. Um, I was yeah, that was the it. first thing that I saw when that dropped. Everybody was freaking out about how glitchy and busted it was. And they're like, this is unacceptable for a Nintendo game. And I'm like, oh man, wait till you play something from Bethesda. <laughs> Takes a long drag from a cigar. It's And it's just like, people just keep coming back. But, uh, well, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm waiting until like I get my next paycheck and then I'm like, I'm probably going to go get a Pokemon game because I haven't played a Pokemon game since high school middle school if if there is a pokemon game that they need to remake in this day and age and they have the technology and they have the database for it and they can make it online play just give me a new pokemon trading card game for pokemon give me pokemon the magic the gathering arena edition but don't give me don't give me alchemy that will fucking fight you. No, don't give don't give me a digital strict mode that you can like patch cards by changing text and everything, which is I think the dumbest thing that Magic's done online yep. recently. I saw a TikTok recently where a mom did or like a lady did her male significant other someone's laundry, and at the bottom of the washing machine you can see the back of a card protector. And oh, a no. Pokemon card logo. And she's just like, oh no. Oh no. Who did I drown? Who did I drown? <laughs> and it's a hollow, it's a holographic Charizard. Why would you keep that in your pocket? There's in no way. In your pocket. And it's like ruined. And I'm just like, I keep a single Pokemon card in my wallet. Legitimately. It's and it's a, sh- it's a sharp one. Yep. Yay, yep. Sharpedo! <laughs> sharp. That's on brand. Yeah, it's the one Pokemon card I keep in my wallet. <laughs> That's incredible i had cards like i never learned how to actually play the game but like my friends collected the cards and they'd trade them Mm. and i never was in trading like if i had cool cards and one of my friends wanted it and they gave me something stupid like i didn't care i was just happy to be around my friends um i tended to collect the cards of things i thought was cute so like i had a lot of growlithes (laughs) um but yeah just they were just collectible. I had like the binder that had Snorlax on it. 
I loved the card game. I never played it competitively. I just kind of played it with friends. And I think my worst memory of the card game was waiting at this kiosk in the mall where they used to sell like card game packs and everything. And the kid in front of me bought the last pack in a box before they had to open up a new box to like, you know, put stuff out. The kid's like standing next to me and is opening it up and he got a pack with both the Charizard and the Blastoise in it, which would have been oh, my pack. Geez. Oh man. <laughs> and I open up my shit and I get like some basic bitch ass rare and I'm like God. I was like, man. <laughs> and I was like, I think that was my first that. experience. I think that was my first experience growing up where I realized that the world's not fair. <laughs> so <laughs> Pokemon cards I feel like had a big renaissance. Like, just unpacking Pokemon cards during oh. the pandemic. Oh, yeah. If you can find, like, an unopened box of, like, the first, like, base set. Like, people live stream that stuff. I think Aaron from Aaron Game Grumps, does, yeah. Like, he buys just boxes. They did it for, like, Magic and also for, like, uh, Pokemon. They were just, like, pack opening. It's, like, this weird niche, like, live stream community of, like, we're going to open this box today. It is calming. It is. It's fun to watch. Um... um I have, uh, as as... Sorry, I have a friends that buy packs, and in the packs there's a card with a code on it, where you can use that code to redeem a digital version of that pack on the trading card game platform. <laughs> so every now and then I just get like a Facebook message with like twelve pictures attached to it that have just like card code packs, and I was like, I have a collection on the online trading card game. I didn't even put money into this because they just keep sending me all these like pack packs. Uh, magic Arena, codes. if you would do that again, it'd be nice, you know. Yeah, like if I can open a magic pack and be like, here's a code, get one of these packs on Magic Arena. I might play Paper Magic again. <laughs> so. yep. yep. That's a rat for another game. Uh I my memory of uh the trading card game was uh we we I got the starter set that had like the much app. Yeah. Um uh, and I I was in line at uh, at uh, Toys R Us, which is me showing my age. Um, and it's coming back. Don't salute. It's coming back. It's just, yes, it's just but those, the, but, the double. But the Toys R Us of our childhood. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so I remember getting in line and my mom said uh, was buying it, and but they didn't have it at the time. So they're like, you know what? We'll just put it on a rain check. And we came back like weeks later. It was the last one they had. They kept it on rain check. I remember getting it. I remember being happy about it. It was so nice. The holographic much app. Just, just picture two extra arms. Yeah. I uh, I picked up the psychic one that had the Mewtwo card uh, as like the main one in the box. Mm -hmm. And I think I remember those... I think those are the ones that my friends and I played with the most were just the pre-made. We didn't even like buy packs to adjust them. I remember when I started, uh, when I actually became employed later on, like years down the line, uh, I learned that Pokemon cards had value. Um, I wish I knew that before because I used to have a binder with all 150 of the original Pokemon in the cards in a binder. Is at my friend's house, Caesar. If you're looking at this, you better still have it. I'm coming, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I sold um, mine on eBay. Like, I uh, didn't really look into how much they were worth. I was just like, here, I don't need these anymore. Someone will enjoy them more than I will. So, I didn't have anything of value from the base set and all that. Like, I didn't have any of the cards that are considered like money nowadays when I got rid of my cards. Um, it was either like, not first pr not first edition or not the holographic version so like i still got a decent value because just the volume i had <laughs> but um i think my pokemon cards being sold it was my first like foray into buying a bunch of magic stuff in bulk <laughs> so <laughs> oh magic the gathering we're gonna keep talking about it because it's a card game yeah. um I think the only other thing I I was introduced to with card games is like the concept of a chase rare, um, yeah. which uh, the one I was looking for uh, when I started becoming employed was this uh, this dark type Charizard. It was really cool looking. It was like super edgy, like this big lizard, just darks. It's the it was the um, shiny Charizard, so it was like black skin. 
Um, yeah. And it was typed to be a dark type, which was super fucking badass to, for me. Um, but I think we could probably t- go more and more on about Pokemon, but I think that's a good starting point for all of us here. Uh, the also, card game, the movies, and and the video game. Just on passing mention, too, uh, you can find a uh, John Tron video about this. Pokemon also has a shit ton of bootlegs. <laughs> like they, it is like probably the most like bootlegged franchise I've ever seen in my life when it comes to games. And I know this because there was I have played one of them without knowing it. <laughs> I thought I was playing like an early version of another Pokemon game that hadn't come out yet. That was not the case. Um. Uh, yeah, I was playing a uh, Pokemon Diamond for the Game Boy, <laughs> and uh, it was actually a other Japanese RPG game, just with the Pokemon names plastered onto it and like names changed. Oh no! And I was like, "The fuck is this? This doesn't seem like Pokemon. Why does this monster have a cell phone?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay, it's just this whole other game about monsters with cell phones." I can't play this. <laughs> so, but yeah, Pokemon, ton of bootlegs, a uh, ton of urban legends around it too, which could be its whole thing, the Lavender Town music and all that. That's uh, another episode. I think we covered that in our urban legends. We did cover that episode. in our urban legends. I'll see, it's all tying together. This podcast, it's all tying together. You'll have full <laughs> context at the end of the podcast run. <laughs> Because every episode you know who ties else together. Will have full context by the end of this podcast run. Us, the people yeah. producing it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think, it's an enduring franchise. I think we can all say that. I think Pokemon's going to go the rest of our lives. So, and then some, and then some. I think this is now just a universal constant, as long as Nintendo exists. What so. is it? Uh, death taxes Pokemon. Yeah, the, yes, Pokemon. Yep. That's it. The three certainties in life. <laughs> and with that chilling note, I think we'll wrap this episode. <laughs> uh, so, as always, um, thank you for listening if you got this far. Um, if you're listening to us on Spotify, if you're listening to us on YouTube, or wherever you may be listening to us, uh, we appreciate you. Um, check out our flow codes in our various descriptions of the various videos. Um, we have uh, a little bit of information on everybody there. Uh, we're all, we all have our own little side hustles and projects and the unfortunate capitalist hellscape that we live in that we have to commodify everything. Oof, however, too, too real. However, um, I have been Decavolty, that's Anxiety Lasagna, and this is Sharky Hat, and uh, we will see you another time. Everybody, that wait was, bye. See you guys later.